All right, for functional divisions of the nervous system, I want to start by actually having you refer to something you've already done, and we're going to apply that information to our functional divisions to try to make sense of them. So this is similar to what you've looked at before with a feedback loop, and then more generally, a stimulus response pathway. So there are five components of a stimulus response pathway that you could label here. And then once you have those labeled, you should be able to kind of fill in some gaps here of what specifics there are for each, right? So first, oops, first we've got the stimulus. Last, we've got the response, stimulus response pathway. In between there, we've got a sensor or receptor. We've got an integrator or control center, and we've got a target or effector. For a painful stimulus, the stimulus is going to be pain, right? So pain could be um, a sharp object. Let's go with that first. Because depending on what that stimulus is, it's going to be a different specific receptor. We will talk about the sensory system, um, like specifically, um, but I'm gonna use a specific here now. So nociceptors are the names for pain receptors. So let's say this is actually located in the skin that you poke someone's finger with a pin. So the actually pain receptors, let me actually draw our skin here. So here's the skin, oversimplified. <laughs> you know, all the layers of that. But um, in the right, reticular dermis, there are special receptors that detect pain. Those are um, going to have axons that travel to the central nervous system. So this right here is actually, actually let me label, label it here, our input signal. We haven't talked much about input signals. We've talked about output signals. Input signal and output signal for a nervous system response is always going to be a neuron um, or a, a nerve in reality, right? This would probably be signaled by more than one um, single neuron, although that can, could depend depending on how big the stimulus is in terms of area, okay? Getting off track. The integrator is going to be in the central nervous system, always. If this is a simple um, pathway, like you touch something and immediately withdraw, that's a reflex, this could be in the spinal cord. Let's start with something that simple one. Um, the spinal cord is going to have motor neurons in it that. Let me, let me do this over here so we can have it be right here. Here's a motor neuron that is going to be our output signal. Right? Actually, I'm just going to draw this in here. Let's connect these two in the central nervous system. This is an interneuron that connects our sensory to our motor. interneuron in the integrator. What kind of target might we need here? Hmm. Well, we want to move our finger away, right? So how about some skeletal muscle? Clearly what this is drawn here. This output signal is going to synapse, talk to, connect to a Skeletal muscle, this is actually a type of synapse. And tell it to contract. So, oh, I changed my colors now here, that's okay. Muscle contracts, moving finger. And this is a skeletal muscle, okay? So with this in mind, we've already started labeling some things that are functional divisions, sensory and motor. 
So let's draw out these sensory divisions um, in more detail. So we've got sensory and motor. These are the functional divisions. Sensory is also called afferent, going towards the brain. Um, I think I will have actually two CNS motor is also called efferent, which is exiting the brain. So these divisions themselves are kind of, think of them about they're in the peripheral nervous system because um, we're either having information come into the central nervous system or out. For each of these, we can divide up further. We've got what we just saw in the previous slide, a, what, uh, did I do that right? Yes, that's fine. <laughs> a somatic, somatic motor would be that skeletal muscle. Always. Somatic motor re um, responses are always skeletal muscle. These are going to be usually consciously controlled movements. Exception would be like knee jerk reflex, but always skeletal muscle. The other division is autonomic. We have chapters on each of these coming up. Autonomic, another name for that is visceral. I will use autonomic for this, but autonomic motor division. Autonomic is further divided into parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions of the autonomic nervous system. Again, we'll come back to these, but just as introduction, you may have heard of these. Sympathetic is our fight or flight response. Um, all physiological responses related to fight or flight. So taking action. Parasympathetic is our rest and digest. So more relaxed responses, digestion, slowing heart rate. Again, we'll see more of that. One of my favorite things. Sensory is also divided into two different, the same two divisions, somatic and visceral or autonomic, these, oops, I'll do a slash. Um, I will use autonomic for motor. Um, this visceral sensory is used a little more often. Um, autonomic reflexes involve autonomic sensory divisions. We will call them autonomic then. So I forgot to say visceral, right? The whole idea with that name is that it is related to your viscera. So this system here, opposed to skeletal muscle, I should add that, instead is going to be contacting cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, glands, um, other things like that. So these are often located in the internal viscera, internal organs um, that, allow for these, a bunch of stuff to happen without your control. So that your um, breathing, your heart rate, sweating, excretion of digestive enzymes, all that stuff. So same thing here. This is going to be information coming from the viscera. So from the heart, from the, all the internal organs. And right, a visceral reflex, a visceral reaction is, um, how you can remember that. Somatic is going to come from more conscious, um, it's actually gonna become more conscious, right? At this point, it's not conscious until it gets to your central nervous system. It's gonna come from, so, so touch to skin, muscles, um, things like that. And so we have a whole chapter on this as well. One last thing I wanna mention here, another important sensory component is going to be special senses. 
these are kind of a separate category that I don't want to talk about yet, but part of our sensory world that we're going to take in is vision, hearing, taste, smell, balance, I say hearing. Um, those are all special senses because they have special organs and complexity to them. Those are sense part of the sensory system. They don't really fall into one of one of these because they're special. Okay, that's our division. We have, first of all, a chapter on the anatomy of the central and peripheral nervous system coming up. We've already done a chapter on this, right? Just the skeletal muscle itself and actually the stimulation of it from a, a neuron, um, from a nerve. See, I do it too. We have a whole chapter on this coming up and we've got a whole chapter on this kind of all together and I'll break it up a little bit, special senses separately. 